Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, hello there, everyone. My name is Fergie, and we're back to another summary video. Last week, we have discussed about wireless communication introduction, and in this video, we'll be discussing about signal propagation and path loss model. We'll be discussing about signal propagation, propagation characteristic, uh, path loss modeling, and so on. And this is the outline for the first couple of slides from now on, which is the X and RX signal model and path loss model. Propagation characteristic. Why does wireless communication need propagation characteristic? Propagation is for characterization, characterization of radio wave using mathematical formulation, usually to anticipate behavior for propagation. For the characteristics, here we have path loss, shadowing, and multiple fading. And the first one is path loss model. And it is shown by the blue lines here uh, in the image of the antenna transmitting a signal to the receiver, which is the car. And path loss is the straightforward path leading to the receiver and can be characterized by the ratio of received signal to the signal transmitted. As we can see in the graph on the top here, uh, with, which is the ratio versus the time, and the blue lines here represents the path loss model, which has a smooth but very slow change as time passes. And the second one is shadowing. It's basically an obstruction on the path, which is usually by an object, and can be seen as the red box here in the image. The changes in the graph is quite slow and is represented by the red line. When compared to the blue line, it's, it fluctuates uh, quite more often. And the last characteristic is the multiple fading. Uh, mul Multipath fading is the signal received by the receiver from multiple different paths of reflection. This characteristic is represented by the green line in the figure and also in the graph. As you can see, the green line is reflected by an object and is being received by the car. As in the graph here, uh, the line fluctuates much more often and the ratio is inconsistently decreasing when compared to the red line which is the shadow uh, characteristic. This means that multiple fading makes the propagation somewhat unpredictable to model a propagation. So, and here is the path loss modeling. Uh, the first one being Maxwell equation, and next one is free space and two path models, ray tracing model, single cell path loss exponent model and measurement based and standard model. Signals consist of electromagnetic waves and the first path loss modeling is Maxwell equation. And Maxwell equation describes how magnetic field and electric field are related to each other, which is expressed by this equation in the next slide. And the thing is about Maxwell's equation, uh, the downside to it is that the path loss modeling is uh, that there are other more simple methods compared to the Maxwell equation. It might not be practical to design system with a complex, complex method such as this, and you can see it from the equation. Instead, there are other modeling methods in the next couple of slides, which is the next one being free space line of sight model. It's a pretty straightforward model with the transmitter transmitting straight forward towards the receiver as you can see with the blue line. And line of sight meaning that there are no obstruction on the path whatsoever. And the next model is pretty similar which is two ray model. It involves a reflection of signal from a certain object. And it is also straightforward but the thing about the two previous models that I have mentioned, it is quite unrealistic 
to, due to the fact when pro- propagating signals in real life, uh, there would be many objects obstructing the path and for over a long distance. Unless it is being used for a simple system or a project that does not require any large investment into making the system. Um, and compared to the next one, which is the general ray tracing, uh, the component of this model consists of reflection, which is represented by the red lines, scattering, uh, which is represented by the blue lines, and diffraction, which is the green line. Ray tracing is close to how a signal actually propagates. There are many signals being received to there being so many reflections, scattering, diffractions, and that is going on when propagating signals. And the next model is simplified path loss model. This equation is used when path loss is dominated by reflection. And we can use this equation to create a signal model propagation. The, and the most important parameter of this equation is that the path loss exponent gamma determined empirically between 2 and 8. This is an example of frequency allocation in United States. As seen in this figure, we can see the frequency allocation of some services that you may be familiar with, which is the AM radio, TV broadcast, FM radio, 3G, 4G, cellular, Wi-Fi, and some that are quite unpopular uh, compared to the ones that I've been uh, mentioned, which is YGIG, EBAN, and so on. As the spectrum goes from the top left to the bottom right, the larger the frequency gets. And as you can see with the AM radio, it takes a lot of space in the spectrum, ranging around in the middle of the lower frequency spectrum right here. Wi-Fi takes the higher frequency spectrum, and so does uh, 4G cellular. Although the 3G is lower in spectrum when compared to the 4G. And you can see for the rest of the whole spectrum. And with this, there is a technology that is located between 60 to 100 gigahertz, which is really high. It is called the millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is suited for systems that use small wavelength, thus the name millimeter wave. It is located in the high spectrum bandwidth, offering a high data rate. However, currently only a few commercial millimeter wave systems occupy these frequencies. Millimeter wave is still under development since its channel models are still immature based on measurement and few accurate analytical models. The path loss proportion to wavelength squared is enormous and it has oxygen and rain absorption due to its high frequency. It makes it more vulnerable to these types of attenuation. As you can see on the graph on the left side hand side of the screen, with increasing attenuation on, la- on the labeled H2O and, o- and O2, which is water and oxygen. And in order to tackle this issue is by empirical channel model. Empirical channel model in the area which is not suitable for millimeter wave, the existing channel modeling cannot be used. And the early cellular empirical models are based on extensive measurement. The examples are Okumura, model, Hata model, cost 231 model, and multi slot model, and there's also Wallfish or Bertoni model, and so on. However, the empirical model is dependent on its location. And the current empirical model consists of LTE, 5G, and Wi-Fi, with 5G model includes higher frequency up to 100 GHz. And that is all for the summary of this video. And thank you for watching. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.